If a man is called a blood, what is he? Is he a A prize fighter? B Mexican American? C Negro? D American Indian? The answer is C. A blood is a Negro brother. You're seeing a more politically savvy black man. And so people are aware of all the tactics, all the all the tricks, all the games and stuff like that. The commission report talks about the communications gap between the people of the ghetto and the rest of America. Just how deep is it? To scratch the surface of this skin deep problem, PBL now offers part of a test prepared by a social worker from the ghetto of Watts in Los Angeles. I mean, look at this idiot here. He even has a damn Michael Jordan um, shirt on. The social worker, Mr. Adrian Dove, was struck by the fact that low-income black men were required to do well on tests keyed to middle-class experience and educational standards. So Mr. Dove decided to put the shoe on the other foot by writing a test for middle-class Americans, both white and black, to see how well they understood the special culture of the ghetto. Under yeah, a blazer. Yeah, I peeped that too. He tried to be down. And Before the woke era, it was possible to have movies like this one, Airplane. In this particular, maybe the most famous scene of the movie, the two gentlemen are speaking jive, and when they call over the stewardess, the guy that's in pain says, some old foe butter lay me to the bone, jack me up, type me. And the stewardess is bewildered, and his friends say, cut a sack, hang, hang. And then at this point, the most famous joke of probably the movie is where the older white lady comes over and says, oh, stewardess, I speak jive. Of course, it's a joke, but the joke rings true because it speaks of the culture divide between not just black and white people, but regular common black people and the perception of us, especially black men, by the status quo. Young black kids growing up in the Bronx who don't even know what the word a computer is. They, they don't know. They don't know these things. The cultural divide between Edo's hardworking voting black people and the status quo rears itself at election time more so than any other time. When it comes to Democrats, maybe taking it off for granted for, for a while. Yeah, what, do you, what do you feel of that? Because that, as I gotten older, like I said, I'm, like I said, I'm, I'm, I'm twice your age. So I used to grow up, it's, it's been great. And my mother and father, like, you know, you're black, you're a Democrat. That's a, that's a thing, you know, in the community, you know what I mean? But as I got older, I realized that they, they, I feel like they care more about our vote as opposed to our situations. And we can see the perception of black people versus the actuality of what black people are looking for in elections. Do you feel that? Do you feel like the Democrats are taking your vote for granted? Yes. Why? See you, so you say the same thing, Ray, say two different generations, but why do you feel that way though? For a long time, they've always tried to like, it's like in Harrisburg too tried to specifically go for like people like us all the time. We saw this with the get your booties to the polls in the 2021 Senate runoff. We saw this with no voting, no bucking, which again is basically saying, do you want some booty? Then if you don't vote, you're not going to get any. And we saw it again with Meg Thee Stallion singing her variety of twerking songs as a way of enticing black voters to engage in the process. It's becoming more normal that we just don't want to vote anymore mm -hmm. because not enough is being passed or like wrote, like written in to even help yeah. us as people. Yeah, yeah. Things aren't being done for us. Yeah. They just ask for our votes, but there are actually nothing being done for us. And this is going generations and generations and generations. What this shows is that those that are in charge of the political apparatus that are trying to appeal to black people and more specifically black men for votes is that they don't understand black men. They understand the character of black men, but they don't understand how black men are, what black men are and what black men want. Now, all of a sudden, this news cameras are everywhere where black men are. Hey, what's going on, right? All of a sudden. Donald Trump, a racist. I'm gonna be honest with you. Mm. Until I see something mm. for myself that would paint in my mind or give me the information, the evidence, hey, he's racist, I would say yes. But currently, that man has done anything or said anything that made me look at him and go, oh, he's a racist. It has been painted in the media for him, like because like they take sound bites of him, they take all his speeches, and then and, and they can turn them into like him targeting one specific type of race in a sense like that. But I like him. 
like it, it unless there's a defining wow. image of him being racist then he's racist to me I'm, I'm gonna be brutally honest um i work for this man i work for the trump park condominium i did private security for him mm -hmm. and if you if you actually work for this man you will see he has one of the most diverse companies you can work for. I'm talking about from Polish to Dominican to Russian, you name it, they work for him. And he treats them all well. He treated me like a king. Like, I've, I've been around this man, you know, and he's, been, he's always been good. I've watched him in New York City. Every rapper in New York City has mentioned this man for a reason. Because he does do things in the community. It's funny you say if that. If you pay attention to his presidency, he did do stuff at historical black colleges and inner right. city, things like that. So, like, this is why I tell people, like, get to know the person first. Do your homework. Soul food is a popular staple of the ghetto. It consists of delicacies like hog maws, black-eyed peas, and chitterlings, or chitlins. What's, what's something that you always carry with you? Hot Just sauce. Really? You, yeah. Yeah. Really? Yeah. Are you getting information right now? Hot sauce. Hot sauce wow. in my bag, Swag? Hot sauce. Really? Yes. Now, listen, yes. I just want you to know people are going to see this and say, okay, she's pandering to black people. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Is it working? Now, about chitlins. Just suppose you're a black Julia child and you wanted to cook these chitlins to a tea. For best results, how long do you cook chitlins? A, for 15 minutes, B, 24 hours, C, one week over a low flame, D, one hour. The answer is B, 24 hours. Is Kamala Black, yes or no? I share that same view. Wow, is Kamala Black, yes or no? I heard she was, I heard she's a half black and half Asian. It, it feel like she black when she want to be. I, that's, I'm going to be honest. I'm just going to be honest. I, 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 I feel that same. Huh? Wow. Yeah. She uses the black card when she have to. Wow, oh, it's huge. Okay. I'm just saying I've heard this is huge. Okay. When I played that audio on my Sirius XM radio program on Thursday, many callers who self-identified as African-American were quick to tell me that those men were the exception, not the rule. Some describe them as low information voters. Low information voters. Low information voters. Young black kids growing up in the Bronx who don't even know what the word computer is. No different than you'd find among whites. Vote for Joe Biden or you ain't black. CNN thought they had some red meat underestimated black men. So we seen that, right? The part at the end is CNN. You see how they tried to spin that? Now, Smirnish has got a radio, he said his radio show on Sirius SM. Who the, what black people is listening to some white boy on Sirius SM talk radio? Listeners who identified as African American said that's the minority. And they're trying to label them low information voters. You, you, you see the spin? In the Negro community, the opposite of square is, how about A, round, or maybe B, up. Why not C, down, or maybe D, hip? And the answer, as every good brother and sister know, is D. The opposite of square is hip. First of all, look at the surprise when 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 he said, uh, "You will have to show me something." This guy is getting just getting cut up right now. When he said, "You will have to show me some," you know, objectionable to say that he's black. I mean that he's racist. Did you see the, the look of utter and shock on that dude's face? What's interesting watching the interview in the barbershop is that you can see the drastic difference from what the social expectation of black men wanting in the election is from what black men actually want in this election. And it's fascinating watching it play itself out in real time. Things have just come to a head. It's like. You no, know, we settled on the lexicon, brothers agreed upon that, and then like we broadened the conversation and all that lexicon that we built started being turned into, okay, this is the shit we, we worried about and we complained about, and we uh, have identified as the problem. What organizational, uh, economic and political things can we start talking about that can solve some of these problems? Because that's what men do when they get together and finally agree upon something we start figuring out how to solve things. And all of that has pretty much come to a head right around the period of an election 
uh, time with a candidate who is uh, basically a populist and a nationalist um, and that um, brothers can relate to. So it's like a perfect storm. But, but she's my real quick. The outspoken introvert said he might as well walk in and said, slap me some skin. <laughs> Dog. <laughs> That's a whole fact. That's a whole fact. You, you know what? You know What's what? going on there? Right? That's That's right? That's right? That's you talking John? <laughs> exactly. Exactly. I, you know what? They're so out of touch with black men right now. Somebody, it would, it, they are liable to say, hey, homeboy, and throw their head on, their their hat on backwards, or what's up, Jive Turkey? Like, Jive Turkey, so right? Does a black candidate, maybe, even if it's 10% or 5%, or maybe even more, maybe understand your background, your needs better than a candidate who's not? If they've come from our background. Mm. Are you relating to somebody more just based on if they are, they kind of resemble what you look like? Does that inherently make you want to vote for them? If they come from my same type of background, like I'm just like Ray said, like so you so they so they really gotta be they got they just can't be black. They gotta you can't just be black. Yeah. I'm sorry, you have to come from my background. Yeah. You have to understand what it is to be poor, to fight for everything, wow. to get where you, like yeah. I've been through so much to get where I am today. And if you can't relate to that, why am I going to just give you my vote? Why so, am I going to support so, okay. you? I'm so, with I'm person, person, you, though, bro. Hold on. So, so a white person just comes through all of that versus a rich black person. That white person, if he's going through the same bro, thing that I've gone through, he from the hood, he from the trailer parks, he from the bottom, bro, you got my vote because you understand where I come from. Lines, they're meant to divide us, separate us, keep us in place, but we've been crossing lines for years. At the 1936 Olympic Games, a black sprinter is the first to cross the finish line. And soon after, a black woman crosses two lines, integrating both women's tennis and golf. These are the stories of those who are told you can't, but do. Those who not only cross the color and gender lines, but lead the way for the next generation. On the surface, that commercial seems like the quintessential black celebration of excellence. But if you look a bit deeper, what you can see is essentially the cause of what could cause some news reporters to walk into a barbershop and be totally out of sync with what black men actually want versus what his image of black men is. So yeah, sitting there watching this, and I thought about it. I said, this is interesting, right? It's interesting because here in this moment, you had a couple of things take place, right? So this is a commercial from Xfinity talking about the Olympics, talking about, you know, the differences that uh, people can make and challenging against perception and, you know, breaking the boundaries and all of that good stuff, right? But specific statements made for that was, was first that a black sprinter 1936 made a difference, right? A black sprinter. But then she went on to talk about two black women right, that broke the bounds in two different sports. Now, this is interesting to me. First of all, the removal right, of Jesse Owens' gender. That's the first thing that got to me. The removal of his gender. Because being a black male didn't fit the narrative, right? Of what counts as, I guess, diversity, right? So he's, he's kind of neutralized, he's made genderless, right? So that we could hyper-emphasize contributions of black women as far as the Olympics. And the second thing is a more a little uh, more subtle a gesture, right? Like black men haven't made any, compliment, uh, in, uh, any contributions to the Olympics since Jesse Owens. This is an interesting kind of statement. And of course it's narrated and you know, you see the primary visual figure being a black woman in that dynamic, in that commercial. And it's interesting to me because once, especially once you see Xfinity and the Olympics, what you're seeing is the corporatization of what I call flat blackness. Solutions for anti-black misandry, flat blackness and black male death, the black masculine is turned by Tia San Johnson, page 64. The commercial was framed in such a manner that had a black female narrator highlighting the accomplishments of two black women in the Olympics, implying that those accomplishments represented black womanhood. What was suspect about this was the mention of Owens without mentioning his name, playing a very short clip of him running, but then denying him his accomplishments and his gender. However, what is further a problem is that the company behind this commercial, Verizon Xfinity, is demonstrating its investment in black women on a corporate level, but no such investment in black men exists. This series of investments made only in black women while ignoring black men remains constant. Corporate notions of diversity tend to not include black men. 
This is ironic considering that affirmative action began with an emphasis on black men and providing them with employment since the 1970s. What has occurred instead is a hyper investment in both white and black women. This is an investment being made on behalf of a gesturing toward black women and women as a whole, right? Highlighting the contributions of women to the Olympics and black women in particular, but doing so predicated on the notion of removing black males' contributions. This commercial represents flat blackness. Essentially, the idea is to collapse blackness and all of its subsequent demographics to highlight only one aspect of it. In the last couple of decades, that has tended to be black women. To advance them, it has become convenient to sideline, downplay, or outright ignore black men altogether, except when it's useful to include them in some way, shape, or form, like, say, an election. See, it doesn't, it doesn't have to be a problem. You can celebrate black women. You can celebrate black women in the Olympics, but do you have to negate black men to do so? However, this text uses the term flat blackness differently. The term specifically relates to the misuse of black males' statistics, stories, and experiences to benefit other demographics, most particularly women and girls, in ways that do not actually benefit black men and boys. This is a purposeful act by corporations, black feminist academics, and media producers to obscure the historical reality of black male vulnerability while transferring the social equity of those experiences to women. This sleight of hand as it relates to historical accuracy is one that black feminists are known to use. Does Jesse Owens have to be reduced to a black sprinter in order for you to celebrate black women? Many callers who self-identified as African-American were quick to tell me that those men were the exception, not the rule. Some describe them as low information voters, low information voters, low information voters. When the gentleman says in airplane, my mama ain't raised no dumb, I dug her rap. He's essentially saying, stop talking down to me. I understand exactly what's going on. I speak often about Dr. Tiasan Johnson's 18 point black male political agenda because quite simply put, it's time. When you see a reporter go into a barbershop full of black men and he cannot understand why a room full of black men are considering voting for Donald Trump or not even voting over voting for Kamala Harris is simply because no one has been listening to our demands for a very long time, if ever. And the fact that no one really understands what we're looking for in our votes is a testament to the fact that no one has been listening. No one has wanted to listen. And on top of that, what we've seen in much of the media is that blackness is getting flattened into what someone like Kamala Harris is representing or what you're seeing represented in Meg Thee Stallion twerking on stage and what she says is good for black women is what's good for the black community. As a collective, what black men are saying in this particular election is, my mama ain't raised no dummy, I dug her rap. What black men saw on the stage with Meg Thee Stallion and Kamala Harris was, hey guys, this is where you blindly go to the polls and vote for us and we don't give you anything that you're asking for because we never have. And more and more black men are saying, well, if that's the option that we have, vote for nothing or vote for the other side or offer us something. That's not very difficult to do, but maybe this is the first election where someone in some party says, if we want those votes that are dangling out there for independent thinking black men, maybe it's time to offer those men something to get them to bite. Thanks for watching. Like, subscribe, comment below. I'll catch you in the next video. Take care, guys.